The CDC has recommended that all Americans wear masks when going outside, but not taking any chances. Let's do a problem. So we've moved on to the section dealing with relative motion analysis acceleration. So this is problem 16-127 and 128. They pretty much use the same diagram uh, and we'll solve for one in terms of the other. So we have this link AB, that's gonna be our object undergoing general planar motion. Uh, we have point B connected to this piston moving along this purely horizontal channel. Consequently, we know its speed and acceleration. Both at that point, both purely horizontal. What makes this problem different from some of the previous ones is that we have point A moving along this slot here, which is of a circular cross-section or circular arc uh, with a radius of one and a half feet. So that'll become important later when we look at uh, the acceleration of point A. So the uh, acceleration equation that we're using for this section uh, is that we are looking at the acceleration of some point B, and that's going to be equal to the acceleration of point A plus some angular acceleration alpha crossed with R B slash A, that's the position of B relative to A minus omega squared R B slash A. Now, in some of the examples in the text, one of these points, namely point A, was often taken to be a fixed point. That is not going to be the case here. We have point A moving along the slot, we have point B here. The fact that neither of them is a fixed point doesn't actually matter. So, uh, the quantity R B slash A, that is gonna be the vector that stretches from A to B. So pointing along that way, that's going to be R B slash A, and notice we know its angle and we know its length. And so that's the first vector we're gonna write down, R B slash A. Notice we have just a 60 degree angle, a 30 degree angle here. So our X component is going to be two times the cosine of 30 degrees, I hat, it's pointing in the positive X direction, plus, or I should say minus, two sine 30 degrees, because my y component is pointing downwards because it's pointing from a to b times j hat. So uh, you'll also recognize this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Two cosine 30 is the square root of three. So we'll approximate that as 1.73 i hat minus one j hat, where all of these then are measured in feet. So we have the velocity and acceleration of point B. We're trying to find the acceleration of point A, as well as the angular acceleration of this uh, linkage AB. We also consequently have to find this uh, angular velocity omega. So that's gonna be the first thing we do. Now, to do that, <coughs> we're going to use one of the techniques from the previous section, and that was an instantaneous center analysis. Because if we look at these points here, point B, we've already determined is traveling purely horizontally. Even though A is traveling along the circular arc at this instant, its velocity is pointing purely tangentially. So this V sub A is just a tangential velocity V sub T. If we then form the lines that are perpendicular to those velocity vectors, notice that we get the instantaneous center I see to be this point up here, the point directly above point B and then across over from point A. Then we have our A slash IC, that's equal to this distance here. And we already found out that distance because it was part of our component, that's the 1.73. Uh, and then we have the R B slash IC, and that is equal to one, that is this distance here. Then using our uh, expressions from the instantaneous center analysis, we know that V sub B will be equal to this angular velocity omega multiplied by R B slash I C. But we know that this is five feet per second. We know that this is one foot. Therefore, this gives us an omega that is equal to five radians per second. That's kind of nice. Then we can find out what is this velocity at point A, so this is 
V sub A here. That is going to be omega times R A slash I C. And we know that this is 5. We know that this is 1.73. So this is going to be equal to 8.66 feet per second. And it is pointing downwards. Now, once we have that, that gives us our value of omega. Uh, we then have remaining as unknowns our angular acceleration alpha and our acceleration a. So, uh, writing down what some of these vectors are, we've already written down what our relative position vector is. We know that our a b is just going to be equal to 5 feet per second squared multiplied by, sorry, not 5, 3, uh, multiplied by i hat, that's this term right there. Uh, alpha, the angular acceleration, since everything here is rotating in a plane, is just going to be equal to alpha times k hat, because that's pointing in the z direction. Uh, we'll have to keep that in mind when we take the cross product. And then we have omega, which is just 5. Now, recall that the equation here is really two equations, one for the x and one for the y components. And we have alpha as one of our unknowns, and that's one scalar value. However, when we look at the acceleration of A, even though its velocity is pointing purely downwards, its acceleration isn't, and that's because it's traveling in this circular channel. And there's a reason why they gave us the value of this radius up here. When we look at point A, again, traveling along this track, because it's traveling in a circular track, it's gonna have both a centripetal acceleration, call that a sub c, and a tangential acceleration, a sub t, just like anything else, traveling in a circular path. So our a sub a, we can write in terms of the x and y components as some a c i hat plus a t j hat. Now, we've just added another unknown, it seems, because we would have the two components of a, a sub a, as well as alpha. However, uh, the centripetal acceleration is a quantity that we, well, that we already know. We know from physics that this is equal to vt squared divided by r, and we know what this vt is. This is the same thing as va, this 8.66 feet per second squared divided by this radius of 1.5 gives me an ac of, wrote it down somewhere, 50 feet per second squared. So we already know that number. Then the last thing we're going to have to um, deal with, and I'm going to write this separately, is this cross product, alpha cross r b slash a. So we already said alpha is equal to the scalar alpha k hat crossed with this r b slash a, which is 1.73 i hat minus j hat. So we need to do these cross products. Over here, I'm going to have k hat cross with i hat, and that is going to give me a positive j hat. We're going to have a k hat crossed with j hat. That is going to give me a negative i hat, but then we have that negative sign out front. So overall, this expression is going to give me alpha times i hat plus 1.73 alpha times j hat. So putting those together. Now, coming back to our big acceleration expression, uh, we have AB is equal to A sub A plus alpha cross RB slash A minus omega squared RB slash A. And I want to write separately the I hat and j hat components of this. So just going through all of our expressions and collecting these terms here, we have uh, a sub b has an x component, no y component. a sub a has an x component of 50, a y component of a sub t, that's one of our unknowns. Uh, alpha cross r a b, we just found that up here. So this is gonna be plus alpha this is going to be plus 1.73 alpha. Then we have minus omega squared. Omega is 5 squared multiplied by the x component of rb slash a. That was 1.73. This is minus 5 squared multiplied 
by negative 1. That's our other component. So now we have it down to two equations and two unknowns. We can take the first one. This gives us that alpha is equal to negative 3.7 radians per second. The fact that it's negative means that that angular acceleration is going clockwise. Plugging that value back into here allows us to solve for the tangential component of that acceleration. And that is going to give me negative 18.6 feet per second squared. Notice we assume it's positive. So the fact that it's negative means its acceleration is downward. So point A is speeding up as it's moving here. Thus our acceleration A, I can write in terms of its X and Y components, 50I plus negative 18.6J. That's our scalar expression, uh, vector expression, if we wanted scalar expressions, A sub A is equal to 53.3 feet per second squared. This has a positive X, negative Y, and so it's gonna make an angle down here of 20.4 degrees. So that's two problems in one, yay.